today is what we class as almost a tempo day slash acceleration deceleration type day, so mechanical in nature. Um, very aerobic based, um, so we're going to try and build, start at the bottom of the pyramid and build this big aerobic base going forward. Tomorrow will be more speed in nature, so the coach will do skill at a lot higher tempo. Wednesday will become an individual recovery day, so they've got certain things they have to do on the days off to help them recover from what we've already set them. And then Thursday, sort of like repeat Monday to be honest, and then Fridays. We tend to get away from the training ground on a Friday and we go to different venues to, to again keep the stimulus nice and high. And then Saturday is more of a team building longer session really. Pre-season is all about you and you getting better and you've been get, getting better to play rugby. There's a lot of science involved in you know in, in, in what we do, you know, and that's developed throughout my throughout my career. It's got better and better. It's not just a matter of going out there and seeing what what we do. It's um, it's pretty tight, you know, they want us to hit a certain markers, certain heart rates, and the amount of detail that goes into into planning it, it, it probably starts before the season finished last year an off-season program given to us about recovery more maintenance of the body really and just making sure we don't fall off a cliff and then that slowly builds up with weight a little bit of conditioning some movement patterns and things like that gone are the days of blokes turning up you know 10 15 kilograms overweight and then you really start start behind the eight ball players are expected to come in a, in a reasonable shape you know all the boys are in there today and, and, and have hit the ground running this year we are getting in a in a world-renowned um, nutritionist to come in and do some some seminars for the players which just gives them another insight into into nutrition and what they should be doing. The, the future, I think, of optimum sports performance is, is absolutely laboratory testing. I could do all the lab work and you will find some players who will thrive on this diet and supplement and these guys will absolutely have horrendous side effects on it. That's the future, is looking at the blood work and being able to say, look, this is the amount of training that this particular athlete can cope with if you want him to perform. Probably 90% of our boys are outstanding at nutrition. And we, you know, we keep a log of what they're eating or we try to keep a food diary of what they're eating and, and we try and help them with that. The difficulty some of the young kids have that are living by themselves is they've never cooked before. You know, they think a, a microwave meal's healthy. So it's re-educating them and going to the extent of teaching them how to cook and put recipes together that are easy for them to follow. You know, we try and drop them a new recipe every week or so, or give them some guidance on that. You know, when I work with athletes, the three questions I ask, number one is how much love and happiness is in your life at the moment? How much stress have you had in your life? They are usually the players who can't really tolerate a huge amount of volume training. And then thirdly, I believe it or not, is what's in your mouth. If I work with a person who's got a lot of mercury fillings and root canals, my priority is to remove them with a very competent um, dentist. I know that's what determines whether that player comes bouncing in every day or he comes crawling in, you know, and that reflects in the performance on the field. One of our players, Matty Dawson Jones, who we brought in last year, really unfortunate incident where he's done his, uh, his ACL that came at a worse time for him. You know, it was second game of the season last year. He'd obviously come up to impress, and he's certainly impressed in his, the way he's gone about his rehab. I came and had a good pre season, like Rads want me to do, and pushed my way into the team. And then to play that game with a view to playing weeks and weeks from then, and then for that to happen, it just it were like pulling rug from under my feet like. I would say mentally it's the hardest moment in a player's life is getting a long term injury. You're pretty much training by yourself for eight, nine, ten months. Um, so we try and make that more stimulating where we all get involved, where we might train with him or we try and get him involved in skill sessions that we can do. Um, but his dedication to it has been second to none. Everyone can get over the physical parts. It's the part and parcel of playing isn't it but it's telling your brain to keep going and keep doing these things and the the sessions are hard when you're trying to come back and one week you feel like you've made loads of progress and then 
next day you feel sore and Dave's like, oh come on, it's alright, you'll do good. And you just got to trust what they're saying. Him and Atto have been class for me to be fair. And my aim was to be fit for today, which that's the first box, box ticked. And then so at some point in December, I'm going to have to go away and do the actual test to prove that it is, a, it is strong enough now. And once that's ticked in as well, I can feel like I'm back properly kind of thing. And then it's just a case of playing it friendly and see how we go. She sometimes take for granted what you've actually got when you play in regular week in, week out, and then when it's took away from you, it's awful. But I'm looking forward to getting back to that now.